How you doing everyone? It's your old pal Jim here and we're back with more Kuna! And when we last left off, we went to... Uh, we went to Gilles Le Lamouche, La Shrouche or something. The guy's house. Wife's frozen to death. He has a secret safe that I have to find a combination to. And... I'm going to go to the back for better or for worse. I'm leaving my car behind, way behind. Way behind, too way behind. Too far behind. No, okay. Looks like the footprints are going that away. Wait, where am I going exactly? No, no, you pull out the map, you. Okay, so it's going through there. Well, I mean, okay, I don't need to know what's out there. <laughs> because, okay, look, the main reason why I don't want to go out and explore is mostly because not only am I a Freddy cat, but also because I'm not well protected from the elements. If I'm out there for too long, then, you know, I'm SOL. And also, I don't want to leave my car. I feel like I need a... I, oh, okay. I can't run anymore. I feel like I need that for things so call me a coward if you will but i am a cautious coward i'm kind of upset that i'm not look at her she's like no wish i could close the window for her jeez the last thing that she wanted to do was close the window i can't even do that for her well we've investigated the place at least uh we know that the husband is somewhere don't know exactly where he is but at the very least we know that uh Still doesn't explain that arrow, though. Alright. Let's go to the next place. Good to know that I always have my rig... My, my, uh... My faithful radio station to account for. Alright, where's the next house? Oh, I guess that was it. Alright, let's go to this one. Actually, hang on a second. Whoa, before we go into the loading screen. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss the house. But nope, we just have this house that we're facing right now and then one more down below. <laughs> Thank you for waiting, radio. It's good to know that my radio has me in mind. When I'm reading the map, it, the radio knows it just wants no sound whatsoever. So it completely shuts off for me. It has me in what? Jeez. Has me in mind. Bedard's house. Whoa. Oh boy. Alright. Gotta check the shed first. Alright, obvious that no one's here. I know that it's automatic, but it doesn't make it any less creepy when the door closes behind me. Is that crack cocaine? Is that drugs? Is that the hard crystal meth? The true Catholic always <gasps> strives to keep lowly temptations at bay. Obviously, Carl thought, someone in this house wasn't doing a good job at upholding the Holy Bible's teachings. Huh. A peculiar key indeed. Too small to fit in a door lock. What sort of miniature object was it meant for? Maybe the motor scooter. Oh, looks like someone had to hide their habits. <laughs> Behind the trash can? Sure. Maybe, maybe, I'm hoping. Oh, yeah. Wow. What is this person doing with the gas can and the keys to the snowmobile? Did they know each other? Did he was he borrowing the thing? Was he getting it fixed for him? So many questions in my mind. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Now right, here we go. Oh. What was even the point of locking your door <laughs> if everyone hid their key in the same place? Hey. Carl was starting to feel like his investigator life lacked challenge. I don't know, uh, Mr. Narrator. Pretty sure uh, Carl's life... 
Pretty sure Carl's life is, uh, has been becoming quite, not the challenge, but unique, I guess. Hello? The house smelled like incense, the kind that reminds you of the good Lord, of peace. Yeah, but is anybody here? Uh, wood? Ah, huh, I don't have to go very far for wood because it's in my truck. Withdraw a piece of wood that I have a lot of. Oh yeah. Actually, that's actually a good thing to... Okay, I'm almost full, so I have to start stocking the truck with stuff because... Well, reasons. Alright, so I started the fire. It's safe to stay in here. Nothing on the TV. Enough food for rough times. Okay. Religion was very influential throughout Quebec many years ago. Indeed, it was surprising that Carl did not come across a single chapel since arriving here. That's actually a good point. Oh, you just lead outside too? For one of them houses. Oh. TV is on the other side! Exclamation mark. Okay. Let's uh, investigate the area here. Oh, fire starters. Trash can. <gasps> Wired magnet. I don't know why I would need one, but I'm pretty sure there's a reason why it lets me create a wired magnet. Okay, okay. No sound on the line. Well, that's comforting. I'm, st I'm gonna assume that it's okay to take all the stakes. Oh. Why on earth was the light off? No loose change in cracks. Good to know his detective skills are put to the test here. How did they draw... <laughs> How did they draw the sun? Can I zoom? No, I mean, I, 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 they can get away with that. You can, you can get away with not a complete circle in Etch-a-Sketches. More matches. Oh, there's something in here. Oh, I missed that completely. More Polaroid film. Look at me missing stuff. The perfect cookie cutter Catholic family, most likely attending church every Sunday. Hello? This is the first thing I noticed. I had no windows. The family's mother must have spent her days washing the filth off her kids' diapers. The empty cradle sent an eerie feeling down Carl's spine. Oh, as if boy. minutes ago, someone just grabbed the baby and made a run for it. I'm not going to have fun looking in these rooms, am I? Hello? Who knew that giraffes thrived in the North Pole? The craze for toys was stupefying. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it's odd, yes, but... Not impossible for a giraffe to live. No, I think it is quite impossible for a giraffe to live in the North Pole. I don't think it's a very plausible thing to think, necessarily. I think this is the one room that doesn't have a switch. It's the one room that doesn't have a light, actually. Interesting. Yeah, because that has a light. Okay. Hello? Hello? I don't like the music accompanying this. This is not this is not happy music. It is not joyful music. Works of art from a future artist. Marie's diary. Jean-Luc Bedard had without a doubt been the closest man in the village to William Hamilton, otherwise known as Uncle Willie. Okay. August 16th. I have a diary, just like mom. Unlike her, though, I don't wear a long face when writing, but I do love to write my thoughts. And about Martin, most of all, I love talking to him, about him. I think he loves me too. Just like in Romeo and Juliet, people don't like it when I see him, only because he's a uh, Blaise? Blay I don't know. But just like in the story, nothing can stand in the way of true love. Oh, dear. 
Oh, there's only two entries. August 18th. I lost appetite. I can't sleep anymore. Every waking hour, intense shivers run through my body. Dad's making me see Dr. Bupuri. With his big hands touching me everywhere, his foul breath exhaling all over my face. Yuck. I'm not sick. I'm in love. I love Martin so much. There's nothing I like better than, to, than thinking about us playing together like we always do. I wonder if he found the key I lost the other day. He was pretty sad when I did because it's for his dad's garden shed. And Martin has always been afraid of him. Uh, I think Martin's dad is a bit like dad's quote unquote god. The key fell in a burrow next to the shed. Poor Martin. He cried like a baby. But I still love him. And I can use the magnet to get it. Oh, change page. There's more. August 24th. Mom often cries when she feels lonely. I think there's no reason for her to cry. Mom can be stupid sometimes. Oh, that's a nice thing to say about your mom. Dad works a lot because of that wealthy Englishman buying everything. That's what notaries do. They make sure that people get what they're, pay what they're paying for, basically. It's complicated, but that's how Dad explained it to me. The rich guy doesn't look half as bad as Martin told me he was. When I saw him this morning at Dad's office, he told me, Call me Uncle Willie. I found that pretty funny, plus he gave me candy. <laughs> okay, it was kind of it was kind of old and dry, but still candy. I think Dad gets along with Uncle Willie because he's with him because when he's with him he laughs the same way he does with Father LaBelle. Okay. September twenty second. I had to gobble up Dr. Bupere's horrible medicine because if I hadn't, I would have made I would have made it to Christmas, or I wouldn't have made it to Christmas, or so he said. I haven't seen Martin in weeks, nor did I go to school for that matter. Dad has been praying beside my bed every morning for a while now, and at bedtime too. Today I, he went hunting with Uncle Willie, and he told me to ask God to bless him with my prayers. I think this has to do with the medicine that only the richest of rich can afford. Dad told me he'll be praying for Uncle Willie until the day he dies, and that I should do the same. God, Father LaBelle, and now Uncle Willie. I wonder when Dad finds the time to pray for Santa Claus. September 28th. How can Mom be so stupid? And she's getting fat too. Oh, hey, come on now. She cries like a newborn puppy all the time. It's so annoying. I came across Martin today. He seemed pretty thin and maybe kind of dirty. He doesn't look as neat and presentable as Uncle Willie, that's for sure. Gee whiz. It's a mean kid. Kid, kid started to become mean. And also doesn't look like she's that much older. Okay, maybe in this section of the room she's probably a little older. I think the this kid isn't as such. Oh, oh. Aw, oh, thought there was something in there, but there isn't. Oh, excuse me, I had the stiffly nose. Okay, hello? Oh, there's no one in here either. Oh, the journal entry scared me. <laughs> the journal entry sound effect scared the shit out of me. Sylvie's diary. The Bedards had vacated the premises. Carl gathered they would be of no help. Okay, August 14, 1970. Jean-Luc had uh, never had a knack for mathematics. Try as he might, he'll never realize that he simply cannot be the father of the child I'm bearing. But how can I be sure? I have to keep this a secret, at least until the time is right when it'll be safe. August 16th. Dr. Bipre told me that it would start showing soon, that I couldn't keep it hidden forever. Gotta muster courage, he said with his usual condescending tone. Courage to face what's coming, but he doesn't get it all. For him, I just had some childish affair. He doesn't realize I brought eternal damnation upon myself. Okay, we now know why she's probably crying a lot. Marie is very sick and Jean-Luc plunges into despair. I told him nothing about the evil growing inside. Jesus, the evil growing inside me. Sometimes I feel the I get the feeling he can see right through me. My Marie's suffering and I'm the one to blame. Oh Lord Almighty, why do children have to pay for their parents' sin? Oh gee. September 24th. Marie has recovered, but there's something really gloomy about her now. 
She always seems so sad. Maybe she caught a glimpse of what dying is like. What if she's an unhappy child now because of me? Jean-Luc truly honored me two nights ago. If the baby makes it, maybe. Dr. Brupri could convince him it was born prematurely? It's my only way out. October 11th. We're heading to Lac St. Jean tomorrow to visit Jean-Luc's mother. I need to. The situation is unattainable now, and we fear the worst. I know they're not exactly the happiest, like, family, but, uh, oh, there we go. But gee whiz, this is nothing but bad stuff happening. Dreamcatchers. Dreamcatchers originated from First Nations legends. They were used to trap nightmares. Well, yes, but, uh, I guess that's why they have them. I guess that's it. Nothing else in the house. Want to be double, doubly sure. All right, so we have a family, super religious, who ran away suddenly. But why? That's a heck of a. Hey, look, he's the Pope. All right, I remember the girl in her diary saying something about something falling. Close to the shed, near the shed. Something about a mound. Alright, it's the radio in there. I was like, what is that? What are those? <laughs> Alright, let's get in here. Alright. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, then we go down. Whoop, whoop. Whoa. <laughs> Come on, come on like a rock. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's taking a right. Oops, a doodles. Yeah, it's to the right. So there should be one more house. If I recall correctly, it should be to my right, I think. Rough roads. Oh, there it is. There's a sign in front. Yep, that's the house. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay. Whoop! Roy's house! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I went a little too fast. Apparently, it's. It, it is physics. I mean, I was going really fast downhill, so I don't know why I'm too surprised that it was hard to break. It is pretty cold out here. Doge? No oh, doge. Oh. And I may as well nip this in the bud right now, get a wood. Withdraw. Wood. And actually, let me see what I can deposit what can I put in there that I can spare yeah let's just put in stuff that I don't really need uh, empty gas can uh, duct tape cigarettes I don't really need but those aren't really going down so whatever uh, pliers uh, hammer and I, I need that one wood Is that it Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Alright, that's everything I can deposit. Just want to lighten my load in case uh, I, I, I walk into something that I really want. Or, or find something that I really want. I'll read that note in a second. Empty bottle. Okay. What does this say? Uh oh. We fled, it's getting too dangerous. More people live in North Manistan, it will be safer there. But why? It was a classic Canadian house, except for the absent horde of kids that would normally be swarming about. Huh. 
Just one more move and white is checkmated. Game over. It seems the game was abandoned right before the final strike came down. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing. Like, a lot of these places, people are just like, you know, just pack up and leave out of nowhere. It's really sudden. The Fantasy, page one. Matthew had yet to add murder to his curriculum. What is this? He was fond of new experiences, especially the most thrilling ones. And taking the life of a flesh uh, boned and bone individual who the night before was still able to think, dream, fantasize, calculate, read, held the promise of exhilarating sensations. Unlike Raskolinov, it wasn't about axing an old Jewish hag to pieces to test some lunatic theory. Not at all. Matthew just wanted to know how it felt. It seemed so simple. Horribly simple. He didn't have any particular victim in mind. Like most people, his desires ran quite wildly, so he only had a vague idea of them in mind. He pondered using a rifle or a knife, assassinating a young girl or an old man. He tried to focus on practicability. His victim would have to be defenseless. Bodybuilding wasn't exactly Matthew's strong suit. He would have to act spontaneously, but not too much. He wasn't that eager to learn what spending the rest of his life in prison would be like. Some experiences carry just too high a cost to be worth it, really. I don't like this. Generally, I want to stop for a second and say that I do not like this. I don't I don't care if it's fictional or based or especially if it's real. I, I don't like it when people when when there's descriptors like this, you know, someone's like, oh, I just want to know how it feels like to murder someone. I don't like it. No one reserves the right to take anyone else's life. I mean, even, I mean, I don't like it. <laughs> just uh, real talk. I, I don't like stuff like that at all. It just seems like, I don't know. I just don't like people dying. Like when they have a full life ahead of them, like, I just don't like it. Death is a is a is a is an interesting thing for me. Uh, there's a pot in here, but I can't access it. But yeah, it's a, it's an entire thing. Okay. Okay, so let's continue investigating here, and uh, let's not ponder. Things that are questionable in life, at the very least, shall we? Nuke load. Come on, you're not gonna mean to tell me that I'm not gonna be able to take all that sausage, condiments, and soda? Oh, fill up bottle. I guess I'll fill it up. <laughs> I guess there's a reason for it. I just don't know what. The photograph was snapped not too far from here, Carl noticed. The couple seemed to be very good friends. Painkillers? Been finding a lot of those lately. I mean, I'm hoping I won't need them. There's a cat there. A picture of Wilfred in his youth. Carl figured right away that the man must have been some kind of wildlife officer. The couple radiated something akin to lightheartedness, to freedom. Perhaps some people out there truly found a way to live happily ever after. Yeah, except for these guys, though. They kind of packed it up and left out of nowhere. Very suddenly. Oh, another one. I don't like it. It was around that time that Matthew met Beatrice, Beatrice of course. Of mediocre beauty at best, the girl with her distinctive features, check, uh, cheeks covered with large pox-like freckles, Jew nose, racist, oily forehead, tired but vibrant eyes, shaded red hair, slendered as a child body, ew, chirpy laugh, you name it, was the very image of innocence. That happened to be precisely the kind of victim Matthew was picturing in his mind, though. One night he was contemplating the ceiling uh, was contemplating the ceiling from his bed he swore to himself again and again I'll kill her. His dreams were later filled with images of the imminent crime. That's I don't like it. 
He had come up with a simple plan. He come up with a simple enough plan. One fine evening, he would visit her place to become familiar with the area's intricacies and feel closer to the impending murder. To slowly dig into Beatrice's thoughts, desires, dreams, and abilities. This way, he would be able to concentrate. Con he would get a concrete sense of what his sinister deed would be stripping away from the very fabric of life. The whole thing would take two days, a week at most. Ugh, I don't like it. Mm. I don't like it. I really hope it just stops there and that there's no. Canopoly? Canopoly, you win if you pass go. <laughs> Thank you, I needed that. I really, really didn't need that. They even took their fish out of the fish bowls. Hello? Ammo, okay. Was that ammo for the gun that I have by any chance? Am I that lucky? No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, okay, turn on the light. There we go. Might still need Not a gun. single weapon was left. All of them were gone. Yeah, because that fills me with... Oh, another one. Ah, The fantasy page four. The two lovebirds were still going at it seven months later. Though confiding fears and desires alike near the fireplace several days a week, the populace took notice and wounding and wounding words eventually found their way to Matthew's ear, prompting him to take action to prove his gentlemanship. He had to ask Beatrice to hand in marriage. He would have more than enough time to kill her later. Today, when Matthew stares at the motionless ceiling, just like he did 20 years ago, he still wonders what he would be removing from existence by sending me to his father. But he would be depriving his children of then, as if soothed by his fantasy, he gently dr I don't like it. I don't- Why do they have? Why does a family have this? Well, just laying around. Oh, that was four. Okay, I skipped one. Oh, heaven forbid that I skip a, a story that just has to do with- uh, uh, Anyway, the fantasy page three. The first time he met Beatrice, however, she unexpectedly revealed her troubled origins to Matthew. She was adopted at the age of four and recalled, recalling her former life still gave her a hard time. She played the piano in so graceful manner that people often thought she might be the natural offspring of a musical virtuoso. She always cried before falling asleep, torn from the inside by a dreadful pain she couldn't explain. She confided to him so profoundly that Matthew couldn't get enough. Oh my god. Coming back every night to learn every single thing of what would come out of the delicate mouth after pulling one last breath out of it. <sighs> every night he would reflect on what uh, the death of Beatrice would be mean in terms of loss to humanity's common heritage, be it the sound of her sobbing or of her piano melodies, the compulsive tapping of her long index finger on her temple when she harbored dark thoughts, or any other little thing. It didn't matter. Everything would indiscriminately vanish. Everything. All these thoughts made for some blissful slumbers indeed ill. Then days became weeks, and before he knew it, it was Matthew's turn to throw his secrets at her, his hopes, his cries of despair, as if throwing coins in a wishing well. She'll be dead by the end of the month, he promised himself. I don't like it. 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 Oh, you don't like it. Like, I, like, I'm not even hamming it up. I, honestly, it's making me, th that kind of thing disturbs me. It really does, even if it's not real and it's just made up for the game. I know there's, like, stories out there about that sort of thing. But, um, no, I don't like it. I really don't. Uh, it, it just, it, it makes me feel a little ill, you know, that just reading something like that because it's not right it's not cool in the slightest also i think there's a wolf out there in the distance yeah, let's not actually go towards a wolf if we don't have to anyway i just don't like it left a bad taste in my mouth blah 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 <laughs> and i think i run my limit here uh yeah that was the uh house 
let's uh, look at the map here before we move uh, forward. So, okay. We visited Roy, Bedard, Le Chance, Le Meuth, Blavin, Old Rosaire, Blyas, and all that. And so now, let's investigate Hamilton's house. And here is a plan moving forward from here. If I... I'm going to go to Hamilton's house. If anything happens on the way, or if I reach Hamilton's house and it's not really resolved, I don't think it's going to be. There's still a lot of unanswered questions. A lot of gone people, you know? Oh, wait, I haven't visited Blaze yet. I haven't visited Blaze yet. So that's another person that I'm going to visit, and then I'm going to visit Hamilton, and then... If there's still, st if there's still openness left, like... Oh no, you can't continue the game unless you have to investigate. Then I'm going to start with the secret project. I have the keys in the gas can so I can go to Lamuth's place. Uh, finish uh, with that uh, 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 snow uh, speeder. Snow speeder. <laughs> you know that thing with the snow thing. The snow sled thing. Then also there's a... Uh, over here, right here, uh, there's a hiking path with a, with a tower there. So that's there for a reason. Uh, further down the hiking path, there's a boat of some sort here, and the, and then there's all of this here, right over where the Manistan Nord is. So, all of that is going to be explored once I explore Blaze, and once I explore Hamilton. And just in case, I, there is a road, there's an actual road here, right across from Blaze's place, that just has beds. So, am I, I'm wondering, are, is that like an inn? like a, a path filled with like little cabins and inns or something i don't know anyway uh we'll find out more about it later hopefully <laughs> hopefully it'll be a lot more cheerful did not expect roy's place to have that kind of stuff just laying around who raises a family and leaves those things laying around i don't know it's a weird person oh wait no was it i don't know i don't know i don't know was it roy thinking that way and then using that story to relate i really hope not i don't know I'm done. I'm done. Anyway, if you want to know when my next video comes out, just check out my YouTube channel over at Jim Knickerbocker on YouTube. And remember, nothing ventured, nothing gained.